Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Madam, and I'm coming back to you once again. It's time we're going to go over to the Daily Mail, and this is definitely a head scratcher. Uh, it's definitely going to be sort of kind of uh, like crazy, right? So, astonishing story of millionaire social worker age 32 who posed as a 13-year-old traffic orphan to attend three high schools and who tricked adult couple into fostering her. The article writer is Will Potter for the DailyMail.com. It says the 32-year-old social worker was able to masquerade as a traumatized high schooler for almost a year while keeping up a four, her four-time job as a social worker. Shelby Hewitt, also known as Ellie Blake, age 13, and Daniela Blake uh, Herrera, age 16, conned her way into three high schools in a treatment center, even tricking a therapist and her partner into becoming her foster parents. Students who bullied her for looking like she was in her 30s, including taunts that, uh, quote, white cracks early, were disciplined, even though an investigation found they were right all along. Okay, it gets deeper, so strap in, you guys. Like, it's a lot to take in. The reasons for the alleged fraud are still unclear as investigations into her ongoing case by the Boston Globe saw former classmates and furious parents question how she pulled it off. Why did you do this? Tricked friend Janelle Lamons questioned to the outlet. I feel betrayed and confused. And this is the person in question right here. Uh... She definitely don't look like a high schooler to me, but okay, we gonna keep on keep on rolling. Hewitt is charged with criminal forgery and identity fraud, and after she pleaded not guilty in December, she is set to stand trial at the end of the year. According to prosecutors, she began her elaborate plot by pretending to be a troubled 16-year-old Daniela Blake uh, Herrera in mid-2022. Shortly after, she returned to work at the Department of Children and Family, DCF. Child, this is crazy. Graduating with her master's degree in school counseling from the University of Massachusetts, Boston, in 2016, she was initially hired by DCF right out of graduate school on a $50,000 salary. She left in 2018, around the same time her mother and maternal grandfather passed away, leaving her with a large inheritance speculated to be as much as a million dollars. Okay. It is unclear what exactly Hewitt was doing for around three years until prosecutors said she began the fraud in December of 2021 by registering as an email domain at mass uh mass state dot us intended to look like a legitimate massachusetts dcf email she then allegedly created emails for uh two fake social workers who would claim to be working for her michael korneski and michelle delphi delphi i apologize for butchering that uh prosecutors Ashley Poland alleged in court that while posing behind the keyboard as one of these DCF workers, Hewitt had herself admitted as a child patient at the uh, Walden Behavioral Treatment Center and enrolled herself in Boston Public School. The treatment center helped youngsters with eating disorders with Hewitt having long suffered anorexia. From there, she quickly began attending classes at Jeremiah E. Buke High School in Dorchester, where she stayed for around seven months before transferring to Brighton, Brighton High School for two months. Switching to the name Ella Blake, Ellie Blake, excuse me, and claiming to be 13, her alleged con unraveled a week after she transferred to English High School in Boston. The scheme was busted after she complained about being bullied 
by actual teenagers taunting her for looking like an adult. At some point, Hewitt had also purchased a $350,000 apartment, paying for the property in cash rather than needing a mortgage. Oh, ow. If y'all see what I'm saying, comment down in the comment section. Like, how? Okay, moving on. Despite committing uh, to the facade by even having braces put on her teeth, as well as regularly wearing baggy clothes and ponytails to give her a younger look, classmates ridiculed Hewitt for appearing to look like their parents. The school was uh, predominantly black and Hispanic students who reportedly told Hewitt white cracks early. Wow, okay. Kids are rough, yo. They are rough. But posting as fake social worker Michelle Delphi, Delhi, using a bogus Massachusetts state email who had created, she emailed the school's guidance counselor to notify them that the bullying she claimed Ellie was suffering. Ellie has a really bad had a really bad day at school yesterday. She cried all evening and doesn't want to go back. The message said with Hewitt allegedly writing about herself in the third person. Ellie is really sensitive about people commenting on her face and how she looks older. Uh, Miss Delphi wrote, "It's a huge trigger point for her." Delphi said Ellie suffered from a genetic uh, medical condition that uh, prematurely aged her. What you mean, like Benjamin Button? I got questions. And claimed she was a vulnerable victim of child trafficking that now lived with a foster family. At the school, staff worked out a plan for her return. Principal... Uh, Caitlin Murray realized certain aspects of troubled student story didn't add up. Most notably, Delphi's email domain didn't match the correct DCF address. In an email seen by the Boston Globe, Murray urgently requested staff members look at the documents that Ellie was registered with to be sure that she was... Uh, To be sure that she was confident that there is not something amiss here. Something feels like it's not adding up, she wrote. They were later disturbed at being unable to find her birth certificate. Claiming that her parents were dead, Hewitt also, excuse me, Hewitt was also able to enroll under the false identity of Warden Behavioral Care, which specializes in eating disorders. At some stage, she began living with a social therapist at the center, Rebecca uh, Burnett, and her partner, John Smith, seemingly without documentation, as the couple now claim they were duped along with everyone else. Other classmates also claim that she exhibited strange behaviors, including randomly bursting into tears in class and hallways and driving herself to school while saying her family were so poor they were struggling for food. Despite the inconsistencies, classmates said her tragic backstory um, made them merely uh, felt they made her made them feel sorry for her. Excuse me. As friend Janelle Lamons, age 15, said, me and my friends felt really bad for her. Okay, and this is uh, the presumed foster parents. Yes. Okay. Lamons met Hewitt while at Burke High and introduced her to her friends as the new kid in school that she had empathy for. She said her foster mother didn't have money and sometimes ran out of food, she said. 
adding that Hewitt also occasionally slipped up and altered her story. Following Hewitt's arrest in June 2023, Lamon's mother, Robin Williams, said she was stunned at how the alleged con had worked, as the case still leaves more questions than answers. And it definitely does that. I mean, it definitely does that. To find out this 32-year-old is sitting in class with my daughter and other kids, and she jumped to three different schools, it was scary, she told the Boston Globe. Before she was foiled, Hewitt maintained the facade by playing on the girls' basketball team, uh, gossiping with friends half her age, and handling handing in homework, all while still working as a DCF social worker full time. That's the part that kills me right there. Like, how? Who does the clock-in system? Do they check that? Like, like I got a lot, oh, a lot of questions. Insiders claim to the outlet that while surprising flaws in the system meant some social workers can skate by doing the bare minimum, which is clearly the case. Helped by the fact that families under DCF supervision don't want to see you, so they are not going to complain. Also, a true statement. You know, nobody wants to go through that. But uh, friends from college also recall seeing Hewitt shortly before her arrest, where they said nothing appeared out of the ordinary, except for the braces she had fitted to her teeth. Burnett and Smith said they were unaware of her double life, and Smith was reportedly known to routinely show up to support his foster daughter at high school basketball games. I mean, given that you feel like it's a normal situation, you, that's something that you would do for your foster. Well, in kids, period. You know what I'm saying? However, Hewitt's House of Cards came down in June, June 14, 2023, when Principal Murray noticed that uh, not only did the email domain not match DCF, but a letter supposedly from the body had a typo in its logo, noting it uh, was from the Department of Children and Families. Child. The school called DCF to speak with Delphine about the mysterious case, only to be told that nobody with that name worked there due to the flaws in the enrollment system and staff wanting to help a seemingly helpless teenager. Murray found that didn't possess uh, basic paperwork, including a birth certificate. I assume we had some sort of information from DCF regarding the arrangement with the foster parents. We've had no reason to doubt anyone calling before, she wrote in an email to staff at the time. But in retrospect, we should have asked for some formal paperwork. Hewitt was promptly questioned by the police, and she initially claimed Delphine was forging documents to encourage Burnett to take her into foster care. Burnett was later fired from her role as a social worker for failing to go through the proper channels and taking uh talking who she thought taking who she thought a troubled teen into her home but maintained that she and her partner were also victims. The criminal defendant uh, deceived and victimized John Smith and Rebecca Burnett. Their attorney told the Globe, John and Rebecca are among numerous people who genuinely believed a desperate young person was in need. That's crazy. Hewitt reportedly uh, later confessed to the con, as the outlet said, uh, res uh, responded to a request for comment and a phone call by telling a reporter that there is a reason she pretended to be a teen, but her attorney told her to stay quiet during the ongoing case. She said the truth will come out in time, 
but until then, the 32-year-old's motivation for her alleged year-long con remains a mystery. And that is the end of it. This is a pretty lengthy one. Um, I'm just like, bro, how? No, like, let's scroll through some of these pictures. Okay, this is John Smith and uh, Rebecca Burnett. Uh, this is the other girl, Janelle Lehman's mother. Um, you know, and Janelle Lehman's, that was her friend when she was in school, a 15-year-old. Uh, this is the alleged con artist who was said to be an ongoing student. She uh, seen during her actual high school days at Sharon, Massachusetts in 2007. This is what she looked like in 2007. Uh, this is what she currently looks like right now. Uh, it's so much to unpack with this. Where do I start? Like, uh, her parent, well, her family, uh, for what reason, you know, passed on and left her a happy son so she didn't have to work. Um, but I can understand in the aspect of I have worked with people um, that were up in age, even people that wasn't up in age, you know, just people that were a little bit older and they were able to retire or retire early. And, you know, uh, they don't want to stay home. That's totally normal. However, I mean, it comes a point to where, you know, you're living in a $350,000 house that you paid in cash instead of having a mortgage. And, you know, I mean, are you hiding from someone? Are you running from someone? Um, is it a, it's like a mental breakdown? Is you not, you know, obviously she tried on some level to get help, but, you know, at the same time, what was the motivation behind it? You know, what was the drive and stuff like that? I guess we will find out later uh, as it, you know, makes its way through the court system. I definitely will keep you updated. This was definitely, is definitely a head scratcher for me. I have no ideas. I would definitely love y'all help and y'all support and drop it down in the comment section and chopping it up with me. And maybe we can get some theories going about, you know, what, what could have been the motivation. Uh, is it a mental health thing? Is it a, you know, uh, a thing where she feels her life is in danger from an actual person or something of that nature? Who knows? But I would love to hear your theories about it. So drop down in the comment section, chop it up with me. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share as always. And... Thank you so much for watching my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Um, until the next video, you guys.